Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the porch. I'm State Representative Jane Garibay, and today we are here to talk with Doug Shipman, who is the Executive Director of the Windsor Historical Society. Doug follows Christine Ermans as the new Executive Director. Doug began his role on March 1st, just in time to start closing things down in response to the coronavirus. Doug has Glastonbury roots and has served both active and reserve military duty for 30 years. He has worked both um, Colonial Williamsburg and the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation in Williamsburg, Virginia. Doug served as director of the Weathersfield Historical Society for five years, and most recently with the Hartford Foundation for Giving before taking on his new role. As you can see, he comes with a lot of experience. Welcome, Doug. Oh, welcome. Thank you, Jane. It's great to be here. Yes, we're excited to have you. What a time to make that transfer March 1st, right at the beginning, right? Yeah. Well, as you were saying before the show started, thanks to the magic of Zoom, we've been able to do a lot of things that you know we had originally planned to do. Uh, we did have to close the museums, and, and we just now started up our public programming again indoors. Uh, socially distanced with uh, face masks, of course, but uh, so we, we've still been able to get some things done and, and I'm still learning a lot about Windsor and, and the position here. Uh, right, and I've seen things go. that have been like really um, working on a lot of programming and different things, mm -hmm. you know, during the shutdown, but I'm glad to hear you're opening for programs. That's exciting. Is the museum itself open? Yes, our main museum building, our research library, and of course our gift shop uh, are open uh, to the public. We have little uh, you know, arrows telling you which direction to go around the museum galleries and, okay. and, and social distance spacing in the gift shop uh, and limits to how many people can go in each room at a particular time, which so far we haven't busted those limits, so we're, we're good, but we are keeping track to make sure we don't uh, have too many people in, in a confined space. Yeah, I and, like those routes even without a coronavirus because it makes sure you see everything, you know, you go along. Right, right. So, right. Um, yeah. so unfortunately, uh, I was just going to say our, our historic houses are not open to the okay. public yet uh, just because the spaces are so small, it's hard to get a group uh, in there right. and socially distance with the guide. So we, we haven't opened them back up yet. Well, it sounds like, you know, you're keeping it safe to opening, but keeping it safe. Yes. So that's a good thing. So through your fresh eyes, what are you, you know, what have you learned about the, our Windsor Historical Society? And it's a tough job. I can already tell you're well-loved, but you come after a well-loved director. Yes, and, and Christine. well-loved by me too. Um, you yeah. know, as you said in the introduction, I had uh, been the director of the Weathersfield Historical Society for five years. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> They're a great group as well. Right. Uh, and at the Hartford Foundation, we worked with hundreds of nonprofits, including Windsor Historical Society. And uh, I knew about Christine and what a great organization this was, you know, long before I, I started applying for the position. And it's really because of that great reputation that the town has and the historical society has uh, that I was interested in this job. I was really not looking for a, a new job. Uh, it popped up and I was like, wow, what a great opportunity to work with some great people in a great town. And uh, we won't talk about who's first and who's second on, on the town thing, but- uh, Well, I will, uh, but after the- oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, uh, yeah. It's good. We both like to think we're first, so- um, Yes, we that's do. Great. Um, so <clears throat> what are, I know there is um, quite a bit of new people on staff, you know, over mm -hmm. the past year, two years, you know, there's been a change um, and I've met a lot of them and they seem fantastic, young people with a lot of energy. What do you see going forward for the Historical Society? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, before I was hired and part of the selection process that I was really interested in hearing about was uh, a commitment to diversity and inclusion. And the board and the selection committee were very clear that they're interested in uh, making the organization a more inclusive organization. Uh, some of that's reflected in the newer staff over the last four or five years that have been brought on. Uh, they are, as you said, great folks. So it's really a matter of building on the strengths of the organization. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some amazing programs, amazing resources. Uh, as you said, great staff. They're all younger than I am. Uh, and uh, they, they have 
pointed out the irony of, of having an old white guy leading the diversity effort, but uh, we, we are very committed to that and, uh, and are working on that. Well, especially coming from the Hartford Foundation where that's, you know, um, a big part of what they do mm -hmm. in helping nonprofit organizations. You come with the experience of building that team and doing, um, and trying also for your board of directors to be diverse too. I've yes. seen that, so. Um, yep, we've, we've already made some good progress there. Um, we were really pleased that Randy McKenney agreed to join our board as well. So we're continuing to, to uh, increase the diversity of the board. And, and I think the board and I both are on the same page. This is not a, uh, gee, how many uh, boxes can we check? You know, it's not a numbers game. We live in a town right now that is 48% white. So why are so many governing bodies and boards of nonprofits, not just in Windsor, but in many towns, not reflective of the community that they live in? Uh, so, and that leadership reflects how the business of the organization is done as well. So if your leadership is mostly white, but you're serving right. a community that is very diverse, you're, you're just viewing things through a different perception. Yeah. And the, 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 mark, right? the, the whole George Floyd situation, which was tragic in that it occurred, but has had some amazing consequences, has, has opened people's eyes to things that they never really understood before and provided some amazing opportunities for white people uh, to understand better what is happening in their own communities that they never really understood before. So it's a great, great opportunity. Uh, we're, we're a big part of that. We will continue to do our work. Uh, no matter what happens uh, with racial justice in the country, uh, our organization will become a more inclusive organization. That's great. Um, for fun, sometimes I go on to business websites and look at their boards. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to see, especially when I was with the Chamber of Commerce to learn about them. And some of them are 100% white male. Yes. You know, so that was an eye opener. You just think, you know, that we all try to be, especially in our little bubble of Windsor, I think, you know, um, we do a pretty good job. We're working towards it, um, but not everywhere's is the same. No, and, and I, Windsor is such a, it's very attractive to me because it's a very diverse community to begin with. So a lot of the people I'm realizing that I already knew uh, happen to live in, in Windsor. So uh, yep. Duchette Blackburg, for example, worked with the Hartford Foundation. Uh, so we knew each other from the work there and I knew what uh, an incredible person she was. Uh, hopefully she thought I was okay too. So we have you know, a very good starting relationship, but it's a number of other people that uh, have, have raised their hand and say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll get involved in the Windsor Historical Society and they're great folks that uh, I kind of knew before and it's, it's helping us build uh, our, our strategic planning committee is quite diverse, more diverse than any committee the society has ever wow. had before. Uh, and we've also formed an inclusion committee. And the inclusion committee is working with a nonprofit called the Minority Inclusion Project. Uh, and the whole purpose of this group is to help the society see how to build a more inclusive organization. So what they come up with will be integrated into our strategic planning and our centennial planning because our big birthday is coming up in uh, 2021, just next year. So uh, we're, we've got right. a lot to well, do. The goal <laughs> is to represent your community, right? You know, so that Absolutely. you know, even, especially for the historicals, what kind of programs do people want? So mm -hmm. if you have an inclusive um, group, a diverse group, um, you, you can see better what programs, um, you know, will help your community. So if I were interested in history and I want to volunteer, what kind of volunteer opportunities are there at the Windsor Historical Society? Uh, well, we, we've been recruiting people for a lot of committees, as, as I just mentioned, but, um, you know, we, we are open to the public now. And, and so our volunteers have come back in. We have a need for volunteers both at the front desk and we've been doing a lot of educational programming with the um, public schools here in town. It's been, you know, in the past, it's been at the museum uh, and we have volunteers that lead those. Right. Those often are during the daytime. So it's hard for people that work full time mm -hmm. to take off a morning or an afternoon and, and work with school kids. Um, so our volunteers tend to be a little bit older, people maybe that are retired. Um, nowadays, uh, we've been working closely with Windsor Public Schools about how we will provide the same quality of programming, but in the classroom 
either in person in the classroom or more likely by Zoom, just like we're doing now. So uh, students will have a chance to tour the houses, learn about Windsor history uh, remotely uh, with our folks. So uh, we're looking at how we can involve our volunteers in that so that they are the ones presenting some of the history uh, to the students in the classroom as well. So it's, uh, those are a couple areas. We always have an interest in getting volunteers involved in research. Sometimes that comes from them doing their own family genealogy or researching their own house or whatever. And then they're like, well, I'd like to do this with you. And, and we always have a need for people. We have one gentleman that comes in and he scans things for us. You know, digitizing your collections is a big deal. Uh, and if you digitize them, then you can make them accessible to people so they can see them. We just put 50 years, excuse me, 70 years worth of Windsor High School yearbooks up on our website wow. this past month. So you can go, if you graduated between 1950 and 2019, you can see your yearbook on our website. That is really cool. Is you know, cool. think of all the, yeah. Yeah. and that's, that's done by volunteer work. So um, that, that kind of thing is, is another venue for us. So those are probably the three top places right. we need volunteers, um, you know, right. helping run the museum, do educational programs and with research and, and, and collections. Being a management. researcher is a gift. I mean, it really is to be able to go in and research and have that drive to find that information. Um, young people seem to be, I know my kids are really good at reading and I'll say, what about this? You know, which car should I buy or whatever? And they can go in and research everything, you know, so right. that's pretty cool. So much is online now, with, particularly with, uh, if you're doing your genealogy, you can go to some of these really great portals and find a lot of really good information about your ancestors without well, leaving your desk yeah. yeah but how do you start like let's say i've never done research or anything and i want to learn something what's the first step well come here and see us we okay. have uh, i would recommend we have um michelle tom who is our, our yeah, archivist she's librarian great you know michelle she's amazing mm -hmm. um and um sue tate porcaro who is our office manager also the two of them team together and we do a thing uh, called genealogical support group or genealogy support group and we offer it on Thursday evenings during the year. We're going to start it back up again live in September um, and that's just a way to come in in a real informal setting and just learn a little bit about how to do things but okay. you can come in anytime just make an appointment and we'll show you how to get started. Wow that's really incredible. Um, so how many employees right now are at the historic what are their positions? Like I know Michelle, um, mm -hmm. is it John? Yep, so our educator is John Mooney. Yep. He works very closely with the public schools. He's also responsible for all of our okay. great Facebook posts. And uh, while we were closed to the public, uh, he set up a YouTube channel for us. Uh, we work with our host today, Win TV, uh, closely on a lot of video products. And we share some of the same uh, videos on our two YouTube channels that they have one, we have one. Uh, so they're great partners. Um, so that's John Mooney, the educator. Sue, I mentioned, is office manager, but does, oh my gosh, so many other things. Yeah, she's a fabulous graphics artist. Uh, she makes our newsletter and everything else look wonderful. She has a lot of energy. Uh, she does, she's yes. Very positive, yes. Um, Kristen Wands is our curator, and okay. she's the one that uh, is downstairs right now uh, doing the quilt program, our first public program program indoors uh, in four months. So uh, she's sharing her knowledge of quilts and letting people see firsthand some of the quilts in our collections today. Uh, Terrence Bagby is our facilities manager and oh my gosh, he's awesome. Uh, I didn't hire any of these people. They were here before I got here and they're all wonderful. Uh, Terrence is a very professional painter and facilities manager and he's made our place look really good because we've been closed to the public, he's had a That's chance right. to get in and do some manage. painting and redecorating. Have you noticed everybody's um, lawn looks fabulous? Right, right. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I drive through town and I'm like, it's amazing, it's wonderful. Um, so doing that inside, I know a lot of people are cleaning out. If you go to that buy nothing site, people are putting stuff out. Yes. Um, so that's a little bit of positive in this whole mess, you know? Yeah. Well, so those are our staff members. Uh, they're a great team to work with. That's fantastic. Well, I look forward to coming down and seeing you in person sometime soon. Um, yes. 
let us know. I know we work on a program that needs to be a little update now, but Tour Windsor, which was with the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and First Town Downtown. Um, that's a fabulous tool for people to go out through the whole town um, and with their phone Absolutely. they can look up, you know, what's there, but not just historical, but also sites of interest like Lon Pelton's um, artwork. Right, um, right. So we'll get to work a lot together. And we welcome you here to Windsor. We're happy to have you. Very sad to lose Christine. She started about the same time I did with the chamber. Yes. Uh, know, she's, so we've worked together for many, many years. She's amazing, but she's staying involved in some different ways. And maybe just as yeah. a quick uh, closer and a teaser, um, Christine and Sue Tate Porcaro collaborated on a book, as you may know. It's a children's book about little Annie Howard, who is a real person who actually lived in the 1800s in our historic house here, the Strong Howard House. We will be publishing that book early this fall and we'll have a book launch and we hope people will come and see the house, see the book, uh, talk to the author and the illustrator, get a signed copy and have their Thank own piece of Windsor history. With those two involved, it's gonna be fabulous and I can't wait and I look forward to coming to that. So Great. thank you for Jane. being on the porch. Um, I want to thank all our, um, all the viewers that came to watch our program today. Jenny and Howard from Win TV, obviously Doug Shipman. Um, hope to see you next week with another exciting um, on the porch. Thank you.